Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamer tag is IRyanI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, -E and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 291 now, guys. I've picked out five new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description where you can go to their store page and you can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases. I also want to say don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any brand new mods each and every single week. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into this week's mods, and starting us off we have a simple utility mod called the Teleport Rings and Spells mod. Now it's not too often that I cover a utility mod that helps out us modders here, because this mod isn't really that important to people that are just, you know, role playing and doing a regular playthrough. This is more for people that are testing playthroughs, or testing to see how certain areas work, or maybe you just want to teleport around in your regular world, that's also fine too. This mod can be used in pretty much any instance. But moving on to what the mod page says here, inside of Ferengar's office at Dragon's Reach, there sits a strong box on a bookshelf. Inside are the results of an ancient magic Farngar has uncovered, the power to teleport. Farngar sure is busy these days. But when equipped, these teleport rings will take the wearer to its assigned location regardless of conditions. Whether you're inside, in combat, overburdened, falling, or all of these combined. Many of these rings can also take the wearer to places he or she isn't allowed to go yet, or places that are no longer accessible to the wearer. These rings are also one-way teleport rings, so that the wearer will not be returned to his or her previous location when the ring is taken off. And it doesn't use a ring slot either for any armor slots or anything, so you can wear other rings at the same time. Unlike fast traveling, no time elapses during this teleportation, and the wearer arrives at the destination at the same minute the teleportation began. Teleport spells work just like teleport rings and they're also in this strong box here, but instead are cast instead of worn. So if you're testing out a brand new load order and you're looking around and you want to find every single area that might be broken or you want to see if you're getting any crashes in any important areas in the game, then this is a perfect mod to test your load order with because that's what I've been doing and it's been helping out a ton. And that's definitely why this mod's featured here at a number 5 spot this week, so I'd strongly recommend downloading the Teleport Rings and Spells mod and test out your load order before you jump in and do a playthrough for yourself. Coming in at the number 4 spot this week, we have a very simple and very small mod called Weapon Trails. And I got a lot of comments on my previous video asking inside of that big number 1 spot that we had with all the animation mods and just the crazy animations and the swinging of the swords and there's also a Weapon Trails mod that's included in there and I saw a lot of people, you know, commenting and saying, you know, what mod is that instead of the entire big mod pack that we covered there. So this is the actual mod by itself, the Weapon Trails mod that allows you to see the trail of your weapon as you're swinging it. And it works for both NPCs as well as the player, and this is for one-handed, two-handed, and also dual wield support too. And then the NPCs that were covered, we have the humanoids and beast races, vampires, skeletons, dragger, afflicted races, and even giants too. And it's also noted that you don't have to start a new game whenever you download this mod, but if you load up into your save and you don't see the weapon trails, just make a new save and then reload that save. And then you should have the weapon trails inside of your game afterwards. So this is an incredibly useful and awesome looking mod whenever you're in combat, and this also is, like I said, already featured in a bunch of different combat overhauls out there, but if you're already focused in on your overhauls, you have everything you want to do, and you just want the weapon trails, then this is that specific mod that you're going to want to get for that, because this is a really cool way to make your swinging animations, as well as just all the combat that you go through in Skyrim, feel a lot more realistic in a way, and just have a lot more flash to it as well, and I really like the looks of it. So that's definitely why the Weapon Trails comes in at our number 4 spot this week, so I'd strongly recommend downloading it and adding it to your next playthrough of Skyrim. 
Coming in at the number three spot this week, we have a brand new beautiful player home that's been updated to Anniversary Edition and has way more features than before as well. This is the Mistfall Keep Anniversary Edition mod. And the mod page reads that this is a home for an adventurer, collector, crafter, or all of the above. Immerse yourself in the world of Skyrim with this home situated in the center of all of it. It comes loaded with features from linked chests to auto-sorting, as well as auto-undressing pools and outdoor crafting areas. With room for 6 children and 11 followers, this beautiful mountain stronghold overlooks the trade routes directly across from Lightrun. This features a full kitchen, dining room, a follower bedroom and basement, and introduces the first floor with an entry seating area. The kitchen has named storage and can be automatically sorted via a chest by the front door. You also have a butter churn, cooking spit, ingredient storage, and a custom oven. And this auto-sorting orb for ingredients and food sits just inside the doorway. The follower bedroom has room for six, like I said, and the basement has room for five with a full bar. We also have a training area and a crafting area. The stairway also has some displays for maps and all kinds of fishing and treasure maps as well, and the second floor sports the master bedroom loaded with unique item displays. I was completely blown away with the amount of item displays and unique things that you can put on display. This is pretty much the legacy of the Dragonborn giant, you know, unique display cases, all crammed into one giant house mod, and I love the looks of it here. And then moving on, the third floor opens out into the keep's outer walls, displaying Whiterun's vast wilderness and open air crafting areas, along with a fantastic naturally fed pool spilling down into the lake below, which sports a dock and plenty of naturally occurring crafting ingredients. Friendly mud crabs, fishing supplies, this house truly has it all. Now when it comes to actually getting this house for yourself and becoming the owner, it's extremely simple once you download and install the mod, and then you load into your character, a courier will greet you outside Whiterun with a letter. You simply just read the letter which starts the quest which shortly leads you to the destination of the house. Now I absolutely love the looks of this house, it has everything that you're going to need and tons of different areas that you can travel to and store stuff and like I said the unique item displays, I absolutely love being able to you know, start fresh with a brand new character, go get this house mod and then keep this house mod and go and do all my questing and as I do all this questing and level up you can actually see the progression of your character as the new unique items that you put on display and you just really have a nice little journey and adventure with these displays that keep you wanting to find more unique items to put on display. Play. And that's definitely why the Mistfall Keep comes in at our number 3 spot this week, so I'd strongly recommend downloading it and becoming its proud new owner. Coming in at the number 2 spot this week, we have a brand new expansion to the horses in Skyrim, but it's actually an add-on to a mod that's already an expansion to the horses in Skyrim. This is the Equestrian for Witcher Horse Expansion mod. So like I said, this is an add-on for a mod that already exists, so you're going to need the original Witcher Horse Expansion mod, and then you can download this one, which includes over 120 brand new saddles that you can add onto your horse, 11 new horse breeds, faction barding, bannered saddles, and the meaning of life. The goal of this mod was to make a little more variety appear in the game in terms of horses. This does not change the amount of horses you can purchase, but it does change the amount of horses you'll see in your adventures. I also wanted to make it as customizable as possible, similar to games like Red Dead 2 and The Witcher 3. I also wanted this to just play as an aesthetic in the background and not bother me while I was playing. That's why you need the special saddle tools to craft any of the new content at the forge or tanning rack, and why it's not necessary to be able to access your horse's inventory. And like I said, within these 120 new saddles that are added to leveled lists, so you don't have to just craft them all, you can also find them out in the world. You have common, fine, knight, barding, bagged, and bannered saddles. They're highly customizable, and you have the choice of over 30 different common saddles, 30 different fine saddles, and the choice of two different types of saddlebags in two colors. The saddlebags now increases the horse's carry weight by 50, and the studded saddlebags increases it by 100. They also retextured the horses that better fit the vanilla look and upgraded the eye textures of the horses as well, as well as added new colors such as the original brown, yellow, blue, black, black pinto, dark bay. We also have the blonde dapple red, brown pinto, brunette palomino, dapple brown, dapple gray, dapple red. There's a ton of different types of horses and armor and different types of customization that you can do to these horses, and I really like the looks of these. You can also buy and sell saddles with all five stable 
Masters, which you probably saw. That's actually how I got my hand on the tools that you need to actually craft the armor itself. So there's so much that they've added to not only the stables in Skyrim and what you can do and what you can buy, but also the horses that you find out in the world. You can buy a little horse finding map and then go and explore these areas and find brand new unique horses and also put custom saddles on them as well. So if you're someone who uses horses a lot and you're looking for a brand new upgrade, then I'd strongly recommend downloading the Equestrian for which your horse expansion mod so that you could truly have the best and most trusty steed in all of Skyrim. Coming in at the number one spot this week, now this mod was highly requested for me to cover on the channel, and rightfully so, because it once again tries to do it all. This is Skyrad Skyrim All-in-One, Landscape and Architecture Pack. And the mod page reads that this is a mod pack made possible by some of the most highly talented texture artists and mod authors on the Skyrim modding scene. This mod pack showcases the work of Cabal 120, Clever Charaf, Agent W, Shish 15, and the community at the Cathedral Project. Most of these landscape items are optimized at 1K textures as well as the architectures as well to deliver the highest quality rendering possible while maintaining a reasonable cost to our precious 5 gigabytes of reserve space. Additionally, these resolutions are very performance friendly. This mod pack is designed for maximum compatibility and user preference, so it only includes an excellent grass mod, which is easily overwritten if you prefer something else. But when it comes to trees, water, and things like that, those are left to the user's discretion to add below his or her mods placement in the general texture section of the load order. You can also have an SMIM mod of your choice, which is highly recommended to get the most out of the graphics presented with this mod pack. And whenever it comes to the mods that are actually featured in this giant mod pack here, we have the Omidian Borm Farmhouse and Roadstone Wall, the Solstheim Landscape, Imperial Forts, Farmhouses, Caves and Mines, Whiterun, and Landscapes, all made by Omidian Borm. And then whenever it comes to the Clever Charf mods that are included in here, we have the Clever Charf's Fort Dawnguard, High Hrothgar, the Orc Strongholds, Raven Rock, Riften, Solitude, the Soul Cairn, Windhelm, Winterhold, Skyhaven HD, and even the Forgotten Vale. You also have ash piles and lockery textures, and then some additional mods that they threw on top of here. You have the stony AF Markarth and Dwemer ruins, cathedral landscapes, which we also covered in the past, true Nordic mountains, which completely covers all the mountains with brand new textures and looks amazing. There's so many mods included in here, and this is a mod pack that tries to do it all and succeeds greatly. It comes in at just over 900 megabytes and will include every single mod that you're going to need whenever it comes to landscape and architecture, and that's definitely why this mod's featured here tonight number one spot this week. So if you're looking at these textures and you're thinking, I really want those in my game, this is really possible because it's all in one simple mod here, Skyrad Skyrim all in one, the landscape and architecture pack. And that's definitely why this mod's featured here to number one spot this week. So I'd strongly recommend downloading it and completely remastering your next playthrough of Skyrim. So that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five Skyrim mods of the week. Hopefully you guys did enjoy, and if you did, I'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you're new. It really helps me out a lot. And if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, or you can join our Discord. I'll be sure to leave the Discord link in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can join us on there and leave mod suggestions to there as well. Special shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy and I'll talk to you guys later.